Hello, welcome to my channel. A few weeks ago, my attention was drawn to a news article that claimed researchers had finally found evidence for the observer effect. That would be a really big deal if true, because it has been one of the most controversial predictions of quantum mechanics. But is it actually what the article said? Let's have a look. This is a video with a professional host. The title of the article is Evidence for Observer Effect in Wave Function Collapse. And the authors themselves are calling it just that, the first evidence for the observer effect. They say they also have evidence for wave function collapse. Hmm. I didn't know we were looking for evidence for the wave function collapsing. I thought we were looking for evidence for the observer effect. If you follow this channel, then you know that I'm not much of a fan of the interpretation debate. It's not that I don't think it's an interesting topic. It's just that I think it's very unlikely that it will ever lead to anything useful. However, I make an exception for the observer effect because it is such a neat example for how the mind of the measurer plays a role in quantum mechanics. That s why it made me curious whether there might now be evidence for the observer effect after all these years. But then again, when I read the paper, I realized that what they've done is basically what physicists do best. They've invented a new word. In this case, the new word is the collapse of the wave function. They use this as a synonym for the observer effect. This is really confusing because the collapse of the wave function is a term from an interpretation of quantum mechanics. Whereas the observer effect isn't necessarily tied to any particular interpretation. So let's first sort this out by looking at what both terms mean. The collapse of the wave function refers to the idea that if you take a quantum system and let it interact with something big. Like a measuring device then, the wave function of the system suddenly goes over into a state that only contains one outcome of the measurement. So say the thing you re-measuring has a 50% chance to be in state 1 and a 50% chance to be in state 2, then after the measurement. It LL either be in state 1 or in state 2. It won't be in both states at the same time. The observer effect, on the other hand, is a more general phenomenon that can happen both in wave mechanics and in particle physics. It's the idea that the very act of measurement changes the properties of the system. For example, consider a double-slit experiment. You shoot one particle at a time through the slits and each time you get an interference pattern. But if you put detectors at the slits to measure which slit the particles go through, then the interference pattern goes away. Whether or not you look at the detector is irrelevant. The very act of putting the detector there changes the behavior of the particles. That's the observer effect. It has nothing to do with interpretations of quantum mechanics. In the case of the news article, what they did is they looked at quantum dots. These are tiny semiconductors. Like the size of a quantum, compared to a soccer ball, is roughly the same as the soccer ball compared to the entire Earth. Because quantum dots are so small, their properties are very different from those of bigger semiconductors. For example, they exhibit quantum effects like the double slit experiment does. If you shoot them one at a time through a double slit, you get an interference pattern. They also have a very peculiar property that they exhibit this interference pattern only once. After that, they change their properties in a way that depends on how exactly you measure them. 
What the authors of the new paper did is that they measured these quantum dots with two different devices. One device measured the energy of the light that the quantum emitted. The other one measured the polarization of this light. They found that the results of these measurements depend on what the other measurement does. If they measure energy, then polarization doesn't fluctuate as much. If they measure polarization, then energy doesn't fluctuate as much. What this means is that the very act of measurement changes the properties of the quantum dot. This is the observer effect. The authors argue that this observer effect is related to the collapse of the wave function, but this is not generally the case. As I said before, the observer effect can happen both in wave mechanics and in particle physics. It's not an interpretation specific effect. So, what the authors really did is they provided the first evidence for the observer effect in quantum optics. Congratulations! But this is not evidence for the collapse of the wave function. I find it somewhat problematic that they're using this different terminology because it will only sow confusion. There's no need to do this. We already have perfectly good words like the observer effect. Why introduce a new word that could potentially be misinterpreted? I want to add that the distinction between the collapse of the wave function and the observer effect isn't merely academic. It's really a question of what you want to explain. The observer effect is a very general phenomenon. It can happen both in wave mechanics and in particle physics. Explaining the observer effect tells us something about how theories need to be modified when we measure them. The collapse of the wave function, on the other hand, is a property of a specific interpretation of quantum mechanics. To explain the collapse of the wave function tells us something about this specific interpretation. Now you might say, come on, you physicist. You can't possibly claim that the interpretation debate isn't about anything, that it's completely useless. So let me then tell you about something that came out of the many hours I spent staring into the abyss of the internet looking for pictures of cats wearing funny hats. It's a website called Brilliant. Org. Brilliant is a fresh and new approach to learning that makes growing your knowledge easy and fun. They offer courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer, science, and mathematics. All their courses challenge you with questions so you can check your understanding along the way. Some even have little interactive visualizations that really give you a feeling for what's going on. They cover a large variety of topics from general scientific thinking to advanced differential equations. Whether you want to know more about large language models or quantum computing, want to learn coding in Python, or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered and they're adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and it works on your phone as well. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.